Well, uh, welcome to my talk about hacking World of Warcraft. Uh, my name is Greg Hoagland. I have I've worked on rootkit uh, technology for a number of years. And in this particular talk, I'm going to cover uh, a rather specific application of Ring Zero technology used to inject code into the World of Warcraft game client. Um, this may sound extreme, uh, but it was a natural idea for me because I already had the capability to, to do stuff like this in my skill set. And it seemed like a really nice way to get around something known as the Warden Client, which was an anti-cheater technology that was catching my cheating program. So, <laughs> First of all, why games? It's kind of an interesting topic for Black Hat. I've, I haven't seen anything like this before. Um, first of, and foremost, it's really fun. I mean, Actually, over the last few days, I've been talking to people about this talk, and I'm surprised at the number of people in here who, who play World of Warcraft. How many in here actually have a World of Warcraft account? Yeah, see, this is very popular. How many in here use botting or cheating programs? Be honest. Um, in addition to it being fun, though, they're actually, uh, games are a really interesting experiment because the software is um, very complex. Um, a program like World of Warcraft could be considered one of the most complex multi-user applications in the world. Um, another thing that's really cool is that there's actually a healthy community of game hackers, and they're not the same guys who come to this conference. Some of them are, there's some crossover, but there's actually a whole set of reverse engineers with a lot of really good skills that I happened to stumble into when I started playing around with these games. And I thought that was pretty neat, so hopefully there'll be some crosstalk. And last but not least, and probably the most important, is that uh, gaming is a really big business. Uh, Microsoft says it's um, third only to web browsing and email on their platform. Now, obviously, the next question is why cheat at games? <laughs> the first real reason is it's a challenge, right? You want to try to solve it. It's actually funner to write a cheating and a botting program for me than actually playing the game. But to be honest, I really suck at video games. Um, how many here play Unreal Tournament? I have, a bot, I have an aim bot for Unreal Tournament. I can be on the other side of the map with the sniper rifle doing headshots, and I'm still last in the frag list. <laughs> so. Um, it's fun to have an unfair advantage, uh, to use the uh, Unreal Tournament example. It's pretty obvious when you're aimbotting because these are impossible shots. So if you combine this with a six pack of beer and some uh, nice smack talking, you can have a pretty good night. <laughs> um, with these uh, World of Warcraft and other MMOs though, there's actually another thing going on. There's actually a full economy in these games and using cheating can make you money. So obviously I don't really need to talk about what an MMO is. Basically, it's D&D &D and IRC mixed together. It's a geek's wet dream. <laughs> the number of online games, are uh, MMOs, are doubling every two years, so they're tracking Moore's Law. There's over 50 active MMOs right now. Um, IDG estimates that there's about 3 million players in the US. I think that number's probably a little low. And I don't know if you've seen the latest advertising on the Blizzard box, but it says 6.5 million players of World of Warcraft. That's a lot. Here's the uh, statistics. You can see the number of players rapidly increasing here. Here's the total market share of the various MMOs. The big slice is obviously World of Warcraft. The, the kind of quarter of the pie down on the bottom is Lineage and Lineage 2, which is a very, very popular MMO, especially in Asia. So um, people have figured out there's a real exchange rate. Um, and the, you can actually go to a website, and it'll tell you what the exchange rate between virtual in-game money and US dollars or euros is. Last year in 2005, over $600 million were traded in an aftermarket for virtual items that don't exist. Um, I got a recent calculation from an economist who says you can make about a buck 17 an hour <clears throat> playing WoW. That's not enough for us, but it's enough for some people in the world. Here's a, a site you're probably familiar with if you've ever bought World of Warcraft Gold before. This site sells it, and you can see the exchange rate's about 10 cents for one gold piece. Here is a chart showing the exchange rate over time in 2005, and you can see it settled down on about 10 cents per gold piece there. So in China, over half a million people play these games for the purposes of making money. 
They actually sleep on cots next to the computer. You might think this is a sweatshop, but you got to understand in China or wherever this is, they choose this job. It's better than making shoes down the street, and it's better than working on dad's farm. There is a video. Um, I have a link here. My slides are not yet available, but when they come up, you'll be able to get it. This is a video that's a little um, a tour through a uh, Chinese farming operation. And here's a couple of fellows right here working away. Now, let's talk about what the hackers are getting away with. Um, there's one guy whose handle is Smooth Criminal. He uh, specializes, or at the time, specialized in writing exploits for games. Star Wars Galaxies was his target. Star Wars Galaxies, he made so much money duping gold, or I'm sorry, the in-game currency, I forget what it's called, but, uh, right. He actually had to go get, I think, and this is kind of an unconfirmed rumor, but IGE to go buy a whole bunch of accounts so that he could launder the money, he had so much of it. He made $1.5 million in one year, $700,000 of which he kept for himself. He bought a house, and in tribute, when you hit the doorbell, it plays the Star Wars theme song. <laughs> Rich Thurman made 100 grand, farming about 9 billion gold. Interesting, because he was using a server farm of about 30 machines. <clears throat> On uh, eBay, you can see a single exploit sold, sold for about $3,000. And uh, some cheating sites, uh, familiar with X Unleashed? That's a cheating site. Uh, I think they make around $40,000 a month. So cheating is big business. Um, just for fun, um, a couple about, about two weeks ago, I purchased this exploit for you guys. Um, this is a dupe bug for World of Warcraft. So supposedly, you could duplicate an item. And the advertising said that it worked on the latest patch. Um, I probably, I would doubt that it actually still works. But there it is. You stand outside of an instance, and then you party, and then you, somebody goes into the instance after you trade, and then he hearthstones back, and apparently you're supposed to duplicate the item. I couldn't get it to work, so I lost 20 bucks. But hey, I got a slide out of it. You'll notice I actually, it was downloaded as an executable. I had to run it in a VM where I didn't even know what it did. Um, so let's talk about cheating technology. Uh, we got an overview of the game. So what kinds of cheating is there? Now, I, I'm going to preface this with, this is not a complete treatment of all the different technologies. After talking with various people over the last couple of days, I've heard a lot of really interesting tricks and things that I am not covering in my slides. So forgive me for that. Um, I've put two categories um, of cheating here, hard and soft cheating. Um, hard cheating is actual exploits. Those are dupe bugs, getting to places you're not supposed to be able to get to, seeing things you can't see, teleporting, etc. Botting, on the other hand, isn't necessarily cheating. and It's defined as cheating by the terms of service. You violate your terms of service, but it's actually just legal inputs to the software. Now, the work that I was performing was a bot. It wasn't an exploit. So I'll be talking more about bots. Why do you want a bot? Well, World of Warcraft is really boring. So you, you, there's this monster that appears every 10 minutes, and you have to run up, and you have to slash at it. It dies. It drops its gold. And you sit there, and you grind, and you grind, and you grind. I have a day job. I can't compete with that 15-year-old kid who sits in front of his computer all day and his mommy comes in and feeds him dinner in his bedroom. I can't compete with him. <laughs> That's why I want a bot. Um, just to cover the subject, though, there obviously are other types of bots. Aim botting we already kind of talked about. Um, and I did start kind of working with a PvP bot. In World of Warcraft, the, your position in, relative to the other character is very important in combat, so if you constantly stay behind them, you can win in a PvP battle. But you need an automated mechanism to do that, because it's too hard to do by hand. Um, so, yeah, we talked about that. So there's a couple different ways bots work. Um, macros and scripts are the most common. Uh, tools like AC tool, macro machine, there's various other ones out there. Uh, they're very easy to write, and they're very easy to understand, because they completely, uh, their interface is completely at the level of the user. That is, clicking the button, sampling the pixel, doing things like that. They get a little bit more complex when you start reading and writing memory locations. For example, reading my location XYZ coordinates, reading these float values out of this certain offset in memory. DLL injection is the next stage, people injecting DLLs. This, unfortunately, is very easy to detect, so it, it's not exactly the best technique. And I'll show you a way we're going to get around that uh, later in the presentation. And then finally, debugging. Um, I did write a bot uh, last year that was just a debugger that attached a WoW and was able to do a lot of stuff. So let's talk about macros for a second. Um, they take over the entire graphical user interface. They inject keystrokes and mouse movements. You can't use the computer while it's running because it's actually driving the computer. 
Um, and the, the feedback loop is typically either reading memory or sampling pixels. For example, you have a health bar, and if the red dot is here, you know you're at half health, things like that. So here's a little screenshot I took. Um, this is one of my, uh, incidentally, I've lost, uh, at this point, I've spent about $400 in banned accounts for World of Warcraft. The, this, this guy here, um, he's only level seven in this screenshot. He made it to 55 before he got banned. Um, and this is actually an AC tool script. It's very, very simple. You'll notice he's standing in front of a tent. Uh, the reason is, is that I don't want any characters to be able to go to behind him. So he just stands there and a pile of virtual bodies start showing up. Uh, by the way, this exact script is available on Rootkit. You just download it on my vault. <clears throat> okay, so that's easy stuff. Let's talk about more complex stuff that's been done, process manipulation. Uh, a very common hack in World of Warcraft is called speed hacking. Uh, this is a form of client-side security. Uh, because of performance reasons, you can't store everything on the server. The client's responsible for it. The uh, most ridiculous thing is your XYZ coordinate. You can actually overwrite that in memory and instantly teleport somewhere else in the world. That was one of the most uh, common hacks in World of Warcraft for a long time. Um, so uh, one of some of the things I can do is I can control which way I'm facing by writing a uh, vector into memory and my XYZ and whatnot. Here's an example of a program that does that. This is called Bubba's Warcraft Hack. And you can see in the list there the various um, cheats that you can engage. For example, uh, no fall damage. If you fall off a cliff, you don't take any damage. Uh, there's another one in here, lock speed, so you can run into certain speed, et cetera. Um, now, that's, this is all invasive. Um, there is another type of bot that you can write, which is a complete and total replacement for the client program. So I'm gonna show you a screenshot of one of those. This is not released, by the way. This is something you can download. Um, but here's the program running. And it's actually, um, it has a complete implementation of the protocol for World of Warcraft. So it's able to completely replace WoW.exe and run on its own. And this is very, very superior to in-game, but there's a lot more development involved to, de to make this work. So just thought I'd throw that out there. Little map, little map showing on the X, Y coordinates, the various things. <clears throat> now, um, this isn't an O-Day I found. Someone I know uh, graciously let me put this in the slides for your benefit. Um, this apparently still works. You can force any other player in World of Warcraft to sit down during PvP. <laughs> so there's the message. And you just need to put their GUID in there, and you can force them to sit down. Um, moving on, thread hijacking is the technique that I'm going to, I originally explored when I was uh, working with uh, Jeremy, who, who wrote uh, Wow Sharp. Now, WowBot wow and Wow Sharp were a really popular uh, botting program last year. So I'm going to describe how this works. Uh, we're going to hijack a thread, the main thread of the application, and we're going to force it to do other things for us, and then we're going to return it to its original location. Inside the program, World of Warcraft, for example, or any other client, are all the internal functions that do things like move, cast spells, pick things up. We can force the main thread to make those calls. By doing that, we don't have to have a macro anymore. We don't have to have any UI integration at all. We actually change the way the logic is working in the program. So here's how the original bot worked. Now, this is detected by Warden. So this is not the new stuff. We use Microsoft Detours, Detour Render World, which is called many, many times per second, and it detours into an injected DLL where processing takes place, such as forcing movement, casting spells, and then it returns back. Here's a screenshot of the actual bot program right here. It's written in C-sharp. You can extend it. And